funny. Ivy, how are you doing? Hi. Hey. I'm so glad to see you. Ivy, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm still waiting to go home, but I'm looking forward to going home. Yes. We're so proud of you. That is so cool for you to be on. Tired. I wanted to last wanted to do it last week, but I couldn't get my wits about me. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You sound but... great. You sound very strong. That's a good yes, you do. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> We're in actually in a different room tonight. So. Okay, cool. Room, room eight. I'm oh. eating with dinner, so Ooh. and that there's a beeping going on, so I might have to meet. Okay. Yeah, just well, unless you're we, will, we will know you're with us anyway. Thank you for being on Ivy. That is beautiful. Thank y'all for all your prayers. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. All right, everyone, we're going to give it just another minute. We have a little technical stuff going on. So then we'll start in just a second here. All right. Sheila, mm -hmm. you want to pray us in? I will pray us in. And I think that everybody knows what's happening with the... Um, how to function in on your zoom screen but i'm going to pray us in so lord i thank you so much for tonight i thank you for what you have planned i just thank you for um allowing us to be in your presence and actually having the desire to have a relationship with us i just um we thank you and we praise you lord and and we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart would be pleasing to you tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And all uh, right. I think you're up. I yeah. know. I am, except for that I'm dealing with this tech. So, yes. Hey, don't worry about that tech stuff. Just drop it. Um, don't even worry about it. We're super, super close. Super close. I'm we're like super right there. close, right there. All right, we're we are gonna do the sales. Um, do I have a volunteer? And you'll have to speak because the screen is kind of cloud clouded. Right now. Fixed it. Yeah, fixed it. I got it. All right. So, are you ready to do the sales? I'm ready to do the sales. Okay. All right, guys. Here we go. Let's right. do the sales. So every single day, we surrender to His Holy Spirit. We are loving God more and loving people more. Daily, we are prioritizing prayer and praying continually. We are building on God's word and training to obey what it says. We are focused on the mission and we are sharing the vision as we go out amongst the lost. We are showing God's love in action and sharing his love in words and we are inviting people to discover God's word for themselves. And when they say yes, we are discipling them in a love relationship with God and with others. And we are multiplying. We are teaching and multiplying others how to go out and do this. And all together, we are staying connected with those who make us stronger. Wow. wow. What you multitasking? Girl. That's I got it to work. Got it to work. Everything's good. Woohoo! All, all right. right, Pastor Jeff, it's all you. That's awesome. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to be um, going through a review of where we've been to this point, and um, and it's going to be um, it's going to be on a PowerPoint, and hoping that this is going to be something that uh, that we're able to do um, in a way that you're going to be able to see it. That's one of the technical challenges we were working on. So. Let me share this and see if it works. Um, so here we go. Presentation start right there. And use presentation. And one more. And one more. Go yeah. to the that one. All there right. you go. Yes. Nice. All right. Everybody good? Yes. Fantastic. All right. So um guys, we uh we we're 
for you to for you to get hold of the idea that God could actually use you to start a a movement that would reach countless people. The idea that you could be used by God to start um, actually, you know, to start a new church, but not just a new church, but a new church that would be starting new churches is really outside of most people's capacity to even dream, you know, that God could use me in that way. But that's exactly what the foundation is being laid today for you to do. And we, um, over the past few years, we've been moving farther up this, this ladder. We've been stacking more blocks on this. And now this year, it's one of the reasons I was so excited about this training this year, is we, we, we're adding one more block and moving toward actually seeing our first uh, group to actually move to that place of actually becoming, um, uh, actually, I should say second. The first one that's already done it is uh, Deb and Vonnie have already been through this process. And so Deb and Vonnie are, are what you would consider to be in the world of, of multiplying disciples. Um, Deb and Vonnie and your group is actually considered to be a, an, a, like, a miraculous level of, uh, of implementing what we've learned. Okay. So you guys, you guys have done, done this and done it early. Um, now we're looking at our second group getting ready to, to move in, into that place. It looks like in terms of going all the way from zero to a church, which is really, really cool. So very proud of you on that. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing that you do to get there is lay that foundation of daily discipleship in your life by having a daily discipleship, um, you know, connection and those daily calls, those kind of things. That's one of the things that we have implemented over this last several years that is radically important. Um, and it helps with helping all of us to get to that place. Then setting the sales of discipleship daily that encompasses everything that we taught last week and everything that you heard as Sarah and Sheila were talking today. So that's focusing on uh, the, the mission, sharing the vision, going out among the lost. Every aspect of that is something that we are actually focusing on on a daily basis. Now, keeping in mind, making a practice of making pals in your France, I want you to think about it, is praying, asking, listening, and sharing with people who are in your friends, your friends, your relatives, your acquaintances, your affinity group folks, your neighbors, coworkers, everybody, uh, classmates. It's, it's everybody that God has put you in an area of influence. Making pals in your friends means that I'm seeing those people in my friends. I'm beginning to pray for them, ask them questions, listen to them, and share. Now, I want to go back, and, and I don't want to uh, Vani, if you don't mind, I'd love to just share that you were such a beautiful testimony to this when we had started the process years ago doing PALS. You know what I'm saying? And years ago, we started down on this process of actually saying, okay, let's get our focus on the people. At that time, we didn't have the France acronym. We just said, wherever you are. And I remember you were doing that in school, I think. Uh, Vani and 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 your connections in school and the people that you were working with and those people were the main ones you were doing that with. Okay, so moving out into that place where you're making pals in your friends is huge. But then praying and connect daily with people on your prayer calendar, that's something new for us. Um, had we had it back then, the people that kind of rose up in uh, in Vani's radar, that these are people that I feel like God's put on my heart that I want to be praying for. Well, she, she was doing it then, you know what I'm saying? So Vani was consistently praying for people in her school and in her circles of influence, but we've just found a way of making that a regular thing and getting us conscious of more people that we're praying for in that way. Um, now, here's what you'll find is that out of the people that you're looking um, to influence and to reach. Jesus talked about the, in the parable of the sower that there's everything from people who just are completely closed off to it. They're like the path to people who get all excited but fall away quickly. There's, there's also people get, that get caught up in just the business of life and, and all that stuff and they get choked out. But the ones who bear fruit 
man, it's beautiful when you see that and you see lives begin to change. But there's a lot of seed casting, you know, that goes on that doesn't seem to be bearing any fruit, you know? So three out of four in the example that Jesus used. So having a lot of people that you're connecting with, praying with is important. That's why we use the prayer calendar. Is so that you're sowing more seeds. You're seeing more people. You're praying intentionally for more people. And so it's basically taking what Vonnie and Debbie were doing years ago and taking it up a notch by just increasing the number of people that you're intentional in reaching out to. Then we seek to move the conversation uh, on the prayer quadrant. Again, that was something that we didn't have back then. Um, and, and so... Uh, in those conversations that Vani would have with people at school or Deb would have with people at work, those conversations that Debbie and Vani have with people, um, they didn't have that simple and beautiful prayer quadrant that just says, okay, you can move a conversation from casual to meaningful, and then it's easy to move from meaningful to spiritual and then from spiritual to biblical. Now, they were doing it, right? That, that was happening but they weren't conscious of it that, wow, this is an easy way for me to think through these conversations. You now have this tool. So as time has gone on, God has given us tools to help all of us do what Deb and Vani were doing in that time, you know? And so helping us to see, wow, I can move conversations forward. And that's what we're seeking to do. Then we go to sharing Bible passages um, or stories daily that was not a part of our regular practice at that time to have this consistent effort of getting us in the practice of sharing Bible stories or passages on a daily basis. And that is still a hard one for most people, you know? But what you'll find is this, is when you fill in your prayer calendar, you'll find it to be every single day. Because as you do that prayer calendar, you're adding more and more people. And so as that date comes back around and you see, oh, I'm praying for George today, you know what I'm saying? And sending George a passage of scripture or seeing George and sharing a story or doing something just becomes natural because you're more focused on those people and you're rotating through them over the month. And what you'll find is, is every day you're going to have passages to share. You will, it'll blow your mind. Now, I don't know if y'all know it. Have you ever known somebody who posts a scripture every day to everybody in their, in their um, Facebook or something like that? There are people who do that. It's a beautiful, beautiful practice. You're doing something like that, except you're being very focused and intentional because you're doing the prayer calendar. And so you're reaching out to them personally and saying, hey, this made me think of you. Does, does that make sense? And so it's like taking that practice to another level when you're moving into it. Then we'll go to invite others to discover daily in order to find P-Pops. That's what we're going to be learning about tonight. All right. We're going to be learning about potential persons of peace. Now, a potential person of peace is a person that we think might be a person of peace. Um, I miscommunicated when I was doing the sales last week because I said, when they say yes, we have a person of peace. Well, when they say yes, we have a potential person of peace. They might be a person who's going to receive the gospel and share it with others and be that person, or they might not. You know what I'm saying? So just because they say yes to my first invitation doesn't mean they're a person of peace, but they might be, right? So I begin to disciple them. When I begin to move in toward discipling them, I'll find out if they're a person of peace or not. You know what I'm saying? But they're a potential person of peace when they say yes. Well, that's how you find those potential persons of peace is by this. I'm sharing scripture with people, but when I invite them to discover for themselves, that's where you get the first peek at a potential person of peace as they go like, yeah, I'd be interested, right? Now, these other pieces we're going to get into in days to come, but leading those persons of peace in a DBS or a DDC, that's a discovery Bible study, which is a simple pattern you've been learning. A DDC is a daily discipleship connection, like through a daily discipleship call. It's leading them through one of those things. It's leading them through that simple process you've been learning. But leading these potential persons of peace through that is extremely important. That's the reason that we've been encouraging you to do a busy life challenge with somebody just so you'll have the practice of leading somebody through one of those 
discovery Bible studies or, or daily discipleship connections. That kind of makes sense to everybody. So that's why that practice is extremely important for you to do. Then we invite them to invite people from their friends, their friends, relatives, acquaintances. That's where we haven't gotten yet. Okay. So tonight we're going to be talking about this because when they reach out to their friends, that's when you see that the person very well may be a person of peace and you start seeing how persons of peace work because a person of peace is somebody who reaches their family, reaches their friends, reaches the people in their friends. So when they start inviting their friends into what you've invited them into, that's when you see a person of peace really showing up. All right. Now we're going to go from there to invite those people to become a weekly C group. That's what Vonnie did and, and Debbie did. They did C groups all the time. And I think it was Vonnie's group that ultimately became your CU at home. Is that right? Like, like a C group that Vonnie had started. Um, and maybe I'm wrong about that. So y'all tell me if I'm wrong or right. Um, we was. had um, both people from our C groups. All right. Yeah. Great. So y'all had two C groups that basically came. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we're going to be teaching y'all. If you don't know about C groups, you're going to be learning about C groups. And those of you who are watching this after the fact, um, you'll have a chance to ask us questions about that because the C group is is crucial. And it was a huge part of what led to the to the new church family that was established by by Deb and Vani. Now, we have other um, others of these kinds of 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 groups. We have home groups and there are many of these home groups, but those home groups were mainly developed by by inviting like people who are already in the church to start going to a home and becoming that. But the unique thing about Debbie and Vani's group is it really became something that grew out of relationships they had already developed, which is which is what we're going to all be learning to do to, to start these new groups. Then you challenge that C group or uh, to a high five challenge or other challenges. That will be a new thing. So when when Debbie and Vani started they didn't have a chance to invite their C group to a, 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 a challenge like a high five challenge or 24 seven challenge. But since they've been a home church, they've done it right. So y'all done it. Then we're just going to invite people to do that earlier in the process. You know what I'm saying? We're going to invite them to a challenge earlier. Now, for those of you who are in our last training, you'll notice this is following a different pattern and what we felt prompted to do was try the pattern that is more like the pattern that Debbie and Bonnie used. We've been praying through this process saying, okay, God, you're teaching us and what are you doing? But what happened with Debbie and Bonnie was their first step was into a weekly C group. And then from there, they went with that group that they were connecting with weekly and the daily challenge became something that they invited from there. So, so we're going to be encouraging y'all and spurring y'all on to do it that way to actually start with a weekly connection with somebody. And then after you get a group that's, that's stab established in that weekly connection, then you get the chance to invite them to a daily challenge. Now we're going to try that this season and we're going to see how it works. So um, two of the guys who are going to be watching this after the fact are guys that are in a group right now. And they're a group that started the way we did it last year. And they've never really become the every week group with the cohesiveness that Deb and Vani's group had. You know what I'm saying? They never, even though they meet every day in their in their daily discipleship connection, their weekly gathering and that unity that's developed through that has not yet developed for them. You know what I'm saying? And so, so we're looking at it, switching it around, going to what you guys did, Debbie and Vani, to to begin with, and letting people's first step be a weekly. Uh, connection and then go to the daily challenge so we'll see how that works this week this year now the the, the other piece i want to say to you though is it doesn't mean you can't do it the other way around you know what i'm saying and so so we're adding a new way of doing it and we're going to see which one works the best you know for people to get to next will be the challenge them to go through the bible um, and again, Deb and Bonnie's group was ultimately challenged to do, be going through the Bible on a regular basis, and they've done it, you know, and that's been something that's matured that group in a huge way is they're consistently reading through the Bible and sharing. Um, but then this is what we'd be doing. The C group goes through a training to become 
Um, basically, a DMC is a disciple-making community. So what we'll do as you've developed a C group, we never were able to take Deb and Bonnie's C groups through training like this training. So what we'll do is take your group through a training like this, and that's that's what you will do yourself is you'll take them through a training like this. You know what I'm saying? You'll sit down and you'll carry your group through this training and help them to see how they can be disciple makers. So that's going to be the next step in the process. And the final step in the process will be that C group goes through training to become a simple church. And, and that's where they'll learn the five L's, which is what, you know, Deb and Bonnie, y'all kind of laid the foundation of your home group based on the five L's you had learned, you know, throughout all your time at Christ United and what it means to be, you know, a body of believers. Well, these new groups won't have the benefit of that experience. So that's where they'll learn the five L's and all those things. That all kind of makes sense to y'all. Now, if you've been around a while, that may make sense. Um, if you haven't been around a while, we are now back to this persons of peace. And that's what we're going to go into next is talking about persons of peace. In order to do that, we're going to do a discovery Bible study and Sarah and Sheila are going to lead us into that. Hey guys, get yeah. your Bibles out. We are going to be in the book of Luke, verse it, or chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. So get your Bible out. Luke, sorry, my dog is being noisy. Um, chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. And we know that this is this is if you've been with us for a long time, then you've or you've done the Luke challenge with other people, with um, with small groups. We read the we read the book of Luke two times a year in our Bible reading, so we know that you guys are very familiar with this. But we really want us to unpack it and think about what this passage has to say about a person in peace. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyone have it and want to read it, Luke? 10 verses 1 through 12. And you can just go ahead and unmute yourself and go for it. I'll read. I can read. Thank okay. You. Okay. Lord, we just, we're just coming to you now and we just ask you, we're going to get into your word. And we just, we just want to hear what you have to say to us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, this is Jesus sends out the 72. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into this harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you, but when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even, even the dust of your town we, we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Uh, through what verse, Sarah? That was it. That's it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. So, thank you, Lord, for your word. And as we look at this word, what does it tell us, um, especially about discipleship and about um, people at peace and about him and about others? And you guys can just unmute and jump in. I always hear that the, um, the when he told them that the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few, about how many people in our church 
our church globally um, just to go to church on Sunday and and just like I used to do and not think anything else about working for the Lord the rest of the week or in any other place in my life. So the workers are few and ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among the wolves. You know, just go. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's out there. It's ready, waiting for us. So no matter what we're doing in our own lives, there's a way to communicate with people what the gospel means. You can be sitting in the hospital doing it. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's the word. Just keep yes. bearing it. Yeah. And, and like Ivy, that verse speaks to me um, very loudly. Um, it just tells, to me, the workers are the disciples that he's telling to go out there. And he's letting us know that there's so many people out there that would need to be discipled, but there's not enough dis disciples to do the work. And so he's saying, he that's why he's telling us if we're following Christ, he's saying, you know, that's one of his expectations. That's one of his commands is to go out among the lost, to go out even among other believers so that we can hold each other up and encourage each other. And, um, there was something else on. I was something else I had in my head, and it, it went away. But um, another thought. Um, the thing about the peace. Oh, oh, the thing. Oh, the the wolves. He's saying I, to me. He's saying it's not going to be easy. He said you're going to go out. Um, where is about the wolves? Go. I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. So we're basically going to be. I mean, lambs were sacrificial animals, just Jesus was the lamb. And so it's like we are going to be sacrificing ourselves to do everything, to be obedient to God. So we're going to be putting what God wants of us above our own needs. We're sacrificing our needs to go out amongst other, you know, to go out there. And, um, and there's going to be... a you know, there is evil in this world. We're going to run into obstacles. We're going to run into people not accepting what you have to share with them when it's about Jesus. So it's, we need to be, know that it's okay because God is in control and we can't take it personal. We got to realize that they're rejecting God and not us. Yes. I don't know um, if I was clear about all that, but. So clear. And that was, I think that. Take away. As you shared that, Vani, what, what it made me think about is, is the radical contrast between those wolves and a person of peace. So how would you, what do y'all see about, what, what is it, Vani, about the person of peace? What is it that y'all see about a person of peace that, that you would be looking for if you're trying to, like these 72, are looking for a person that, that well, promotes a person of peace? I think I think about Anne, like, you know, she was just hungry, you yeah. know, and she yeah. accepted the invitation right away. And she just was just hungry for the word. And then she just like got in. I mean, it's like she couldn't get enough of it. And then it's like now she's just like thriving and just, you know, touching. She's discipling right. other people. She's become yeah. a discipler. So yeah. she was like, maybe like you say, started out as a potential person of peace, but you know, what a blessing that she ended up to be a person of peace. Absolutely. It's just a beautiful example of that. Absolutely. Great example. Great example. And right? it's nothing that we can create, you know, it's nothing that we can make. It's nothing that we can force. It's nothing that we can coince somebody or no, convince. Sorry. I love like that word, coince. We're going to make that a new yeah. word. She tried to put coercing, coercing together. It's coince. That's my new <laughs> word. I, I like, that's my word. But it's like nothing that we can coince anybody to do. It's all up to him, you know? And so that means on the other side of it, because I can get really like, I don't know, agitated, irritated, 
frustrated, all those aided words, <laughs> like when somebody, when I think somebody should get it and they're not, yeah, it's not up to me. And so it's more about God doing the work and the other person and then them presenting themselves as that person of peace. What you're talking about, Vani, it's like you didn't convince her to do something. You didn't, you know, make her do something. You didn't get mad at her until she did something. It's like she just was drawn. And so I believe that's what he means when he's like, you know, pray to the God of the harvest, you know, and it's yeah. not us. But we Thank don't. You. All right. So one of the things that you're saying, Sheila, and everybody needs to like, like really tune into this. First of all, if you try to convince people, you get frustrated. So just. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> frustrated. <laughs> and <laughs> tired right here. Yeah. And frustrated <laughs> is real. Yeah. yeah, yeah we, right. we need to add a glossary to the, to our website. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You so, know, um, I, I noticed something that, you know, we always know that God goes before us and he's already working on the hearts of these people. And, you know, and here it says, you know, he send, he's sending us out to places and to every town where he's about to go. You know, it says where he was about to go. Right. And so it reminded me of what Ivy said just a few minutes ago about, you know, to, to go, it's out there, just go. Yeah. And then it's going to be left up to him where it says, when we say peace to this house, when we begin to talk to these people, if a man of peace is there, yeah. then if not, we just keep doing it, you yeah. know? So it, it's like God's sending us out sometimes before he gets there. Yeah. And, and then it, it's between them and God. That Don't those are the ones it? that we just keep trying. Don't you love it, Deb? That makes sense. So yeah. beautiful. It's just to do it. You know, we know he goes before us and touches these hearts and they become persons of peace like Annie Mae. And Vonnie said the other day, y'all, I got to share this with her. She's going to kill me because I didn't get permission to do it. <laughs> I know what but, she's um, say. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she said, um, Ann has just surpassed me. And I said, <laughs> but, I said, but isn't that what you want, though? Yeah. yeah, I said, yeah, I go, yes, we do. Yes, we do. And she said, yes, I do. So that cool? that's so cool. <laughs> I'm praying my first graders at the end of this year are smarter than me. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I, I, got, I guess I got the gold star, didn't I? I yes, you got yeah. the gold star anyway. <laughs> so um, I, the point, this is a huge, huge point is you found the call to pray before they went. The fact that that the Holy Spirit, that, that the Father was already at work before they ever arrived and Jesus was coming. The fact that we get to be in that place, that we pray, God prepares, we step out in obedience. And then once we have shared then that opens the door for Jesus to come into their lives and change them. You know what I'm saying? And, and so it's like we get that amazing place those 72 were, but it begins with prayer. So a big point that, that y'all pointed out, starting with prayer, trusting that God's at work. You can't make it happen. It's his work. You just be obedient. As Vani said, many people will reject you. People will be hostile towards you. There'll be all kinds of things will happen, but there will be those people who are like <clears throat> precious sister Anne, right? That mm, yeah. are receptive to the gospel and open up. What else do you find and, out about? And, and committed. Committed. She was, yeah. she was very committed. Yeah. 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 I think that one of the things that I love about this passage is that it doesn't say stay at their house and try to convince them that right. you're right. Yeah, it's just it's okay. Like yeah. shake the dust yeah. off and go to the next. Like, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. hard. That's hard for people who, I mean, and I don't, I don't think that every personality is like this, but I mean, I just know that like for a lot of us, 
we want to convince, mm -hmm. especially people that we love and that we yeah. know are capable, people that we see leadership in, like you want to convince them that this is what God's called them to. And, and you want to invest, 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 invest. And I mean, it's very clear in this passage. Mm -hmm. If just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Keeping so, moving is part of the best thing for getting people to come around. It's it's interesting, but but when you are constantly pressing someone, the principle of least interest is what what shows up, and that is the person with the least interest has the most power. So almost like begging you to give attention to the gospel, and you're just turning it off. Well, as soon as I withdraw that, and I just say, okay, I'll move on then all of a sudden your interest is going to start rising. It just always happens. And, and so many of us have experienced, and, and right now I'm in one of those situations with somebody who was rejecting the gospel. I mean, they were like almost hostile in the rejection of the gospel. Now about five years later, they're hungry for it. You know what I'm saying? And, and so, so it's not that you're writing them off forever. But you need to keep moving because there are people out there who God has already prepared they're ready now. Who else is going to say something? I'm sorry. Uh, me again, sir. <laughs> oh, awesome. I just, Sarah, when Sarah was saying that about how, like, you see, like, a leader in people, I know exactly what she's talking about. But it just made me think about Saul, about how everybody, like, that yeah. wasn't God's choice, but all the people wanted Saul because they saw him yeah. as the picture of a king. And, and God allowed it. And it's just like, we have to just trust God on that too. Like we might see those qualities in people, but God knows people's hearts, yes. you know? And he's the one that sees the heart. Yeah. And then like when Debbie was saying about going out there, um, it just made me think of that visual about us. We're going fishing and we catch those fish, you know, but we, and, and we, give them you know and we're handing them to god and he's the one that cleans them yeah. you know so he's just asking us to go fishing right yep you know what right. guys i believe in all of my heart that we're gonna have so many disappointments yeah we yeah are going and, and like a, you know god gave me that you know that reminder that i have to keep telling myself you know don't get discouraged you're gonna be disappointed but I think about so many times, look how many times Jesus was disappointed. Oh, yeah. He was, I mean, the son mm -hmm. of God, the living God, the creator of all creation. I mean, in his disappointments. And Absolutely. I think we're going to have so many disappointments, but we just don't get discouraged. Yeah. 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 Well, we deal with that when with the auxiliary of the Gideons that we go to doctor's offices, dentist offices, and different places to distribute the word. Enters and we pray up before we go, but there's many times we have offices that just say no, so we just shake the dirt off and then Bye. still come back the next year to still give them the opportunity to say yes or no to having the word of God there yeah. in the office or the hotel or whatever. So a lot of times we find disappointment, but we know it's they're rejecting him and his word, and sometimes it's all about the person who's at the front desk. And not necessarily yeah. the doctor. So it's just persistence and just be Wait. obedient and getting out the word wow. and just let God worry about what's going to happen with those testaments. Oh, yeah. love it. Good word. When it says right. like peace will, a couple of things, right? So when it says your peace will return to you, like we don't lose anything. We don't lose anything. Nothing. Right. Is That's right our peace and it's God that people are rejecting and that's his to deal with. Mm -hmm. Right. So we don't do right. anything because um, our peace will be returned to us. And then it, it doesn't say anything about us. You know, it's just about us being obedient and going out and following what we're supposed to be doing, you know, and, um, God's responsible for all the rest of it. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Okay, so um, I want to I want to just ask. I'll just do this kind of like more of on on a teaching side, but but just ask you the question: When you notice a person of peace, what did he say to do 
Well, let, let me let me affirm what everybody's saying, and that is that you're going to experience a lot of rejection. He says you're like, like lambs among wolves. He's even saying there'll be whole towns that will reject you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You'll go to a place and there won't be a single person to play peace in the whole town. You know, so so he's expecting that many will reject, but he says when you find a person at peace, what are you supposed to do? According to that passage, what did they do if they found a the person? Stay with them. Eat yeah. their food. Spend time with them. Yeah. 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 Now, here's the, the important truth regarding a person of peace is that when you found a person of peace, you stayed there, you, you ate whatever they shared with you, you developed relationship with them. That person of peace, you stay in their house. That The, the word for house in... Um, in Greek is oikos. And so in the teaching that you'll hear people doing around this uh, topic, you'll often hear people speak of an oikos. Well, oikos doesn't mean just a physical house. It means household, which means a whole family and usually a circle of friends. And so the household, the oikos, a person of peace is opening up their home, their physical home, but they're also opening up their oikos, their their family, their friends, those relationships. So that's the important thing. Essentially, they're opening their friends. Does that make sense? So when a person is receptive to the gospel and they're receptive to you as someone who's bringing the gospel, if they're a person of peace, they're not just opening up themselves. They actually care like Anne does about her neighbors and her family and her friends. And they are wanting the gospel open to all of them as well. So the person of peace is more than just willing to hear, they're willing to open up their oikos. That kind of makes sense to everybody? And so, so that's what a person of peace is, somebody who's opening up their oikos, and God uses them. So let's give some examples of that. Um, look at what happened with um, Cornelius. If y'all remember the book of Acts, Peter goes to Cornelius. Cornelius was a God-fearing person. He was looking for, for, for more. The angel showed him to go to get Peter. He got Peter, brought him back. When Peter got to Cornelius' house, he had family and friends. And all these people gathered. And so when he heard the message, his friends and family heard the message at the same time and responded, and the Holy Spirit came on all of them. You know what I'm saying? So, so a whole oikos, a whole a whole group of people were reached. It was the same thing for the Philippian jailer. When the Philippian jailer responded to what happened with the miracle where, you know, the, the chains came off, but this prisoner didn't leave, he asked what he must do to be saved, but he brought them home to his house and his whole household was saved, okay? <clears throat> same thing, Lydia opened up her household and you see this influence over and over again of whole households and groups of people. So what we find is that the gospel advanced through those networks of relationships. You're reaching out to people associated with your France. Now, these folks were sent out to places they had never been. You know what I'm saying? So the 72 are going out to places they've never been. And many of you who have been in the training before, we sent you out to neighborhoods, to walk neighborhoods, to pray, to go to the mall, to go to different places and just go to absolute strangers you had never met to share. And so that is, that's how these 72 were doing. Um, what we then turned our focus to was how many people in our France have we not even gone to yet, much less going beyond that. So we said, let's get to our France first and teach people to reach their France so you, all of you, um, are most likely, or are not most likely, all of you are for sure persons of peace. You want to reach your family, you want to reach your friends, you want to reach those who are beyond yourself. And so you're going to be reaching family and friends, but then you're going to be looking for the person who wants to reach their friends. And those people who want to reach their friends, you're going to help equip them to do that. Now, ask questions, share what, what questions do you have about a person of peace um, and what observations do you have about a person of peace? So pop in and share your thoughts or questions. Okay, I'm going to share something while, while y'all are still kind of processing. I, I just want you to know that 
that in the training from around the world, finding a person of peace is like if you are panning for gold in the mountains, you know what I'm saying, and you're panning for gold and you're swashing it around and you pan forever to get one nugget. Well, that one nugget is priceless. You know what I'm saying? And that's what a person of peace is. Um, what they found is, is time and time again in our training, we will talk to people here in the United States and, here, and from around the world who will say that it took them six or eight months some of them, it took them two or three years before they found their first person of peace. But then as they began to find a person of peace, they got to a place where God just began to move through that process. And they got to where finding persons of peace happened much more often as time went on. But initially, it's a lot of what feels like failure where you, oh, this might be a person of peace, but then they just kind of fall away. You know what I'm saying? This person might be a person of peace or this person's rejecting me. And so that that painting for gold, essentially, is you're looking for that person who's going to reach their oikos. You don't get discouraged because it is like painting for gold. It's not something where you're expecting that every time I pick it up, I'm going to have a handful of gold, that I'm just going to keep moving until I find it. And you don't know whether that person's going to come soon or later, but they're definitely going to come. Now, Sheila has an illustration of a deck of cards that they use in the business that she has. And why don't you share that illustration with them, Sheila, about that? Yeah. So a couple of things is um, like I have wondered before, like, oh, my gosh, this is a person of peace. This is a person of peace. And then it's like, oh, no, they're not a person of peace. But it's, it shouldn't be a discouraging thing. It could be it should be a thing of maybe not yet. Right. But we used to do this thing in my business where we would have four people stand up in front of the room, each with a deck of cards, and um, they had all been shuffled. And so the people would just like flip through the cards. And when they turned over their four aces, they were supposed to go and sit down or just sit down where they were at. And I mean, some people would flip over their four aces right away, right away. And some, it would take, you know, a few seconds and some, it would take a minute and some, it would take till the end of the day. But it wasn't that those aces, you know, or those persons of peace, like we're talking about here, weren't there. It's just that it took a long time to find them. And so it's about our perseverance and not getting frustrated and continuing to go and be led by the Holy Spirit and encouraged and all those things along the way where we just don't quit, you know, and we just keep going. And um, we used to also say that a no was just the first letters of not yet, you know, and N-O is the first letters of not yet. And so if someone is not yet a person of peace, it doesn't mean that they never will be. It just means, you know, you're not going to wait. You're not going to sit around and wait for them or try to convince them like Sarah was talking about earlier or that kind of thing. You just keep going. You just, you're looking for persons of peace and um, those people will come along eventually. Amen. Amen. Can I share something? Yes, please. Um, and Ann and Bonnie can um, sh add to this. Um, Sherry Karras, um, that is a part of our CU at home. She was, a, I was in a C group with Sherry and um, she lives at this um, assisted living place and uh, apartments, a low, a low link apartments. And she's been there for about six years, six or seven years. And she is always, um, you know, just kind of sharing about Jesus to everybody. And I mean, she's carries people, drives them to places they need sometimes and, and everything. And for a long time, and she's always sharing and um, some that she's had rejection severely. And um, she brought the sweetest lady Sunday to our CU home. She just walked in with her. Right. And, um, she said, I brought a friend and um, she's a new neighbor and um, and Sherry has finally got one. I think she was so excited <laughs> and um, she um, 
And so she came and Miss Debbie Johnson, we all fell in love with her, never met her. And she was on the 5 p.m. call today. So wow. um, it is just so precious to see the just the joy in Sherry's face. And I, it took a long time. But I, and you guys can agree with me. We think Miss Debbie Johnson is going to be a person of peace. Right, guys? Yeah. 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 She's, she's, a, she's cute. She's, she's a good getter. She's a feisty yeah. little thing. Yeah. All right. Hey, great stuff, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. All right. So let, let's let's do this. If if this part makes sense, then when we're making disciples, we're looking to disciple someone who will reach their oikos and they'll be discipling others. And so it doesn't mean that all the other connections, we've sown lots of seeds and those seeds may sprout wonderful things. But where you invest your time and your heart and, and, and everything is in the person of peace. That's why Jesus called them to stay with that person. Now, they still went out and healed other people and did other things in the name of Jesus. So it doesn't mean that that's the only place that you invest any of your, your energy. But your discipleship that you're spending time with and building into the life needs to be built into the life of somebody that actually um, is desiring to, to follow Jesus and to reach others in Jesus' name. So we're looking for that person. I'm going to um, share with you something about how we do that. Here in the United States, based on the way it's being done around the world, and this is our latest information on this. So you guys are a part of a beautiful gift that we have the privilege of being a part of a lead in the United States that the United States is learning how to apply things that are working around the world. Around the world, there are now about 99 million people who are reached through disciple-making movements. 99 million, but all 99 million of those people are themselves making disciples. And so it's multiplicative. So this 99 million will be at 200 million in just a few short years. You know what I'm saying? Because it is multiplying. And that's the power of it is that every disciple is a disciple maker in, in these movements. Getting the movement started is what we learn over and over again from people around the world who have done it is starting the movement is the challenging part. And it's the part that takes years and takes investment and takes tenacity and takes not getting discouraged, but keeping on going. But it also takes learning what works in your context. So people in India have done things differently than people who are now working in the Middle East in terms of like right there around uh, Israel, um, working with people who are um, Hamas and and, uh, you know, who are hostile to the gospel in a different way than those um, that they encounter in India. Well, they have different strategies. You know what I'm saying? They have different ways of finding persons of peace among the leaders of Hamas than they do when they're in India. And in India, they'll have different ways of reaching people in rural regions versus, you know, in the, uh, in the more public regions, the more uh, city type regions. So for us in the United States, we are a very different culture. And so what we've been doing is, by God's grace, we've been participating in the process of learning what works here and how do we do it here. So this is the latest, but we're still asking God what's going to make it even better. So Sarah's going to share it with you. Um, we have a process that's kind of an adaptation of what's being done around the world. And when she shares this screen... I'm just going to go through it with you briefly and we'll pick it back up next week and we'll get into it more in detail. All right. While she's doing that, let me give you a heads up. If you have not led somebody in a busy life challenge or in just doing one of these simple DBSs or daily discipleship connections that you're learning how to do on the, on the encouragement calls, do that this week. It's extremely important. And you'll see why as we go through this. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah, for that. So we start with 
um, sharing verses and stories that God puts on your heart. Now, when you share stories with somebody or share verses with somebody, then simply sharing that word will lead you to a place where you can find persons of peace. So that's the reason we want you to get in the habit of sharing the scripture, because getting the scripture out there, getting his word or getting stories out there is the beginning of the process of discern, define, defining and finding persons of peace. Ask them to share with people they care about. Now, if they share with others, then you give them more to share with others. If they keep sharing, um, then you take the next step. If they share, they are a potential person of peace. All right. This is when you have, we call them P-pops. A potential person of peace is somebody that you're sharing with them and you can tell they're already sharing with others. You know what I'm saying? And so, so like the, the lady who came to the, to the see you at home Sunday, she's already, you know, showing that enthusiasm and she's already beginning to take what she's heard and share it with others. It seems, you know what I'm saying? But when you see that, that's a big step. So you're encouraging them to share what they've learned from, from, from you to share it with other people. But then you invite them to a discovery Bible study or discipleship call. You want to invite that person to do what you're learning, this process of discovery, so they can discover for themselves. So this very simple process that you all know, like the back of your hand, is a simple way for them to know how they can discover for themselves what the Bible says and share life with somebody else. And so you're going to invite them to that. Uh, now, use a relevant passage or the Busy Life Challenge passage, but you got that. If you don't do that, you're never going to actually be able to engage a person of peace. So that's the reason we do it over and over and over again. And we do it the same way every time so that you have it just natural to you to lead somebody through that simple process can be very, very easy. Just try it. And like we said, try it with somebody you're very familiar with, like your spouse or your, you know, your friend, your family member. Do it with somebody that you're not intimidated by and you'll find out that you can do it easily and then you'll be able to do it with others. OK, now, if they join the DBS or the DDC, that's one of these simple things that we, we've learned how to do, then they are a strong potential person of peace. If they say, yeah, I want to discover for myself and they're willing to join that, they're a that's a high potential. But then you ask them to invite others to the next one. The next time you get together with them, you want them to have other people with them. Okay. Now they are then looking at their friends, right? And so they're looking at their family and friends and others. They may invite the people that they've already shared the scripture with that you've already been sharing with them, or they might invite others. But if they invite other people to the DBS or the DDC, they are most likely a person of peace. You're almost like, okay, <laughs> they've invited somebody else. I feel pretty sure they're a person of peace. But the final thing is you're going to invite them and their friends to the high five challenge, not final, that's next to the last. But next to the last is you're going to invite them and their, their friends to a high five challenge where you're going to invite them to become everyday disciples. You're going to be saying, okay, we want y'all to consider going beyond just this these Bible studies that we've done once a week. Now we're going to invite you to one of these challenges and we're going to invite you to a, to a, a, an everyday experience of doing this together. And it's at that point that if somebody does a high five challenge, um, you disciple that person, that person of peace and you let them lead the challenge. Okay. They already know how to do it because they've been with you and they've been learning but when you challenge them to the everyday, you want them to be leading it. And if they lead the challenge, then they are certainly a person of peace. You know it then. You know what I'm saying? So if they got their friends and they're carrying through a challenge. So you take like so many people that we've talked to on these calls that are leading challenges with people. You know that they are persons of peace. They're out there leading challenges with others. And you're going like, yeah, this person's in. Now, then you invite them to a 24 seven challenge or to a through the Bible challenge, you're trying to get them in a process of saying, okay, we want to become everyday readers and appliers in our lives. And we want to be going out to make disciples ourselves. So the goal, the ultimate goal is a daily connection in the word and prayer and fellowship and obedience. That's what you get through these daily connections. And, 
as a as, as you disciple them, they'll be um, disciple. Um, they will be disciple making persons of peace, meaning they you're discipling them, but they're now in the process of discipling others. So you've now started just building into them and they're building the others. And you'll be able to say like Bonnie did, hey, they're getting ahead of me. You know what I'm saying? Like they're they're farther down the road than I was. Y'all, forgive me. My timing was really bad. There's so much more to say, but these ladies are going to give you the assignment. We'll pick this back up next week and talk more about it. Look, I was talking and you guys couldn't even hear me. All wow. right. So unshare. our, hang on, how do I unshare? Go up to the top or move our screen. Okay. All right. Your assignment for the weekend, for the weeks coming up is don't forget, just like those building blocks that we talked about at the very beginning, don't forget your friends um, to be praying for those, the pals, the calendar, um, every day set those sales and invite someone to lead to do the busy life challenge with you. And if you've already done it, invite someone new, um, to do the busy life challenge with you. And, um, so those are, thank you. I couldn't figure out how to stop sharing. <laughs> so those are our assignments, everything that we've been doing. Don't forget the building blocks. They build on top of each other. And so if there's one where you feel like you're falling short of, work on that one this week. Invite some people to do, put those invitations out there. Keep the calendar. If you if your prayer calendar has not been strong, be sure to add to that. If you're not setting the sales every day, be sure to do that. If you're not on a daily call, be sure to do that. Um, and then invite someone to do the Busy Life Challenge with you. Yeah. And Sheila's going to pray for us. Oh, cool. Hey, before Sheila prays, um, one, I want to encourage you in something. Um, uh, those are on the website. Um, and I'm going to be doing an adjustment on the website, um, uh, Michelle. So so most of this stuff is, is out there. But I'm going to be adjusting some stuff into the tab that you'll be able to click that says everything you need for training. And I won't be able to have that done until Friday. But by Friday, all this material you got today will be on that, that place. Click on everything you need for training and you'll see everything that we have here. Okay. And that'll, that'll be available by Friday. Great question, Michelle. Now for everybody else, want everybody to just to, to, to hear this. It gives me great joy to be able to say it. You haven't got anything that you've got to go back and make up. If you if you haven't put people on your prayer calendar one day, don't worry about it. That day is going to come around next month and you'll be able to put somebody on your prayer calendar for that day. Don't feel like, oh, I'm behind. I've got to catch up. If you hadn't done your daily reading, don't worry about it. Just pick up tomorrow with the daily reading. If you haven't done, led anybody through a busy life challenge and y'all it doesn't have to be the busy life challenge. It can be any scripture you want to take them through. It's just using what you've learned carrying somebody else through that with with some scripture that you feel like is relevant to them um if you hadn't done it don't worry about it don't beat yourself up just go do it you know what i'm saying so no the the great thing about this process is you don't have to feel guilty about what i hadn't done or feel like i'm too far behind now i can't catch up just keep at it and 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 you'll get in the habit so like the sales if you don't have the sales memorized don't worry about that at all just keep doing them and eventually they'll become just a natural part for you. All right, go ahead, Sheila. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you. I just thank you for tonight. And I thank you for everything that you've shown us. I thank you that you are in control of persons of peace and people's responses and what we need to do, Lord. It's all in your hands and you just call us to do what you've asked us to do and move on. And that's what I thank you for. So I just pray that you would go before us tonight and tomorrow as we go into our days and um, that you would just help us to hear your voice louder than any other. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Love you all. God bless you all. Good night, everybody. Love you. Bye.